Hey everybody, welcome back to Tippy Toe. Again, I pray that all is well with your soul. I pray that you open your mouth. Nothing missing, nothing broken in your life. That the favor of God surrounds you like a shield. Hallelujah. That God would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing into your life that you cannot contain. I pray that if you're expecting this to happen, that you get yourself a truck, honey. Back it up to the throne room, honey. Because God's ready to deliver. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, everybody. So listen, I live my life expecting God to perform his word. And this is why I'm always so excited. I mean, you can ask anybody that knows me. I'm like this all the time. Now, I want to talk to you about the reality of it, right? Because people are like, oh, you can't be like that all the time. Yeah, I am. But let me tell you why and how. It doesn't happen automatically, right? Can't just push a button and be like, okay, I'm on Jesus time. Um, no, this I'm, I got a flesh nature, honey. And my flesh tries to rise up every single day. But the problem is, see, I've been working out in my spirit, okay? Uh, and my flesh can't tell me what to do anymore. It used to run my life, but it does not tell me what to do anymore. And this is what the Word of God teaches us, how to get our flesh under control. See, I have Smith Wigglesworth. If you don't know who he is, just look him up. He's an amazing man of God. And he would say, when his flesh, when he would wake up, he'd go, Smith Wigglesworth can't tell Smith workers what to do. I tell Smith workers what to do. Meaning the spirit man inside, right? God talks about we were a spirit being in a human uh, in, in a flesh, in a body, right? So we need to, who's controlling your life? Is it your feelings, your circumstances, uh, what you think, or is it your spirit, man, the Holy Spirit who guides you into all truth, right? Who is dominating your life? So I'm going to give you a practical example, right? I've been in the word for a couple of years. I'm a, I'm a student of the word. I'm in my third year in biblical studies in Rama, Hala Rama Bible college in Oklahoma. And let me tell you something. I woke up on Saturday, I go to school full time. I work and have a very physical demanding job. I'm 60, okay? So yeah, there's a lot of things that I wake up with little aches and pains and stuff. So you know the drill, right? The point is I woke up on Saturday and my day off. And I had made some commitments and stuff. And let me tell you something. I did not want to get out of bed. I wanted to stay in bed. I wanted to justify staying in bed all day. And I could have. But then I would have had to break my commitments. But you see, I was dreading. I had, you know, I'm a very clean person. I had to clean my bathroom. I had to organize my room. I had to study. I got six finals coming up next week. I could go on. I need. I wash my car on the weekends. I go shopping. I prep my food. Blah, blah, blah. I go to the gym. I've been going to the gym. These are all things that I did not want to do, y'all. And I got up and I started to feel, listen to me, my flesh started right. I said, you know what? I'm going to just call. I'm not going to hand. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to. And I said, ooh, stop. Not that day, Satan. And I took a hold of those thoughts and I said, no, Lord. I was in Africa two years ago on a mission trip. They had no bathrooms. So the fact that I had to clean my bathroom, that I got a toilet with running water, ooh, that totally shifted my perspective. I started thanking God. I said, Lord, thank you that I have hands. Even though my hand was swollen that day and I couldn't even close it, right? But I said, Lord, thank you that I have the ability, that I have detergents, that I have running water, Father God. Thank you that you have given me shelter, Lord, that you give me everything that I need to do the things that I need to do today. That's just an example. I started to flip it. Then I started to praise him. I want you to know within about five, 10 minutes, my joy just overflowed the positivity, the energy that I got. I was able to do everything on my list and more, okay? And I did it all according, to, just to give him glory. So that's just an example. I ain't bragging on myself. I'm just telling you that when you connect to the power of all life, that you, if you're going to do something, why not do it with joy? Why are you dreading? Why are you complaining? You know that complaining is a sin. I learned that and I made a promise when I saw how other people live how grateful I am and just to stay grateful. So today's message is about the awareness of the power of God in your life and that you can take every situation and turn it and flip it and do all things for his glory and for his honor. And listen to me, you start to tap into the power of the joy and the peace that surpasses all understanding. And isn't that a better way to live? Again, it's your choice. I made a choice that day to re, uh, redirect and I chose that I was going to have a peaceful, joyful, overabundant day. And I did. So I'm just telling you. So you can take it. Whatever's going on today, take it and flip it, right? For the honor and glory of God. And, and see what happens. I'm telling you, it's so amazing. You'll never want to be without it. And you'll always do it in every situation. Until you get to a point where it's, it's already second nature to me. When I feel that, when I start to feel my flesh start to rise, it's like the Transformer movie. It's like, Autobot, converge. And 
the, the armor of God comes on, the helmet, the shield, my faith, everything goes up, honey. And I just flip it, baby, because it's not by my might, but it's his might, his power within me that lives. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. So you need to remember that, okay? First John 4, 4. I love you guys. I am on <sighs> Love Lane and Restored Road. Where you at? Holla.